We have a wide range of coding tools available for students to use in developing solutions using digital technologies, and 11 years in which to gradually develop this capacity. Yes, there are curriculum checkpoints, sequence by year two, branching and user inputs by year four, looping by year six, user interfaces and functions by year eight, and object-oriented modularity and data structures by year 10. Project-based learning, however, can greatly accelerate this progression as students seek to solve problems requiring more complex concepts, while others may consolidate using the skills they already have gained. It is important not to become obsessed with this progression to the detriment of the student's learning. Yes, if you were using a direct instruction approach with set worksheets and activities, this would be disrupted by teachers in younger grades allowing students to engage with concepts that you intend to teach. The problem is, there is not an awful lot of content in digital technologies, and students will be likely engaging with branching and looping long before the required points in the curriculum. By shifting the focus from skill development of specific ICTs to the development of thinking skills through project-based learning, much of the complexity of unit planning disappears. Yes, you will need to monitor student projects to ensure they are meeting the expectations of the curriculum, but this can be built into the projects. And you may need to communicate with previous teachers or use portfolios to track student progression. But there is ample time in the 11 years for students to meet all of the curriculum outcomes and do so in ways that achieves the intent of the curriculum. Developing student higher order thinking and deep understanding of the digital technologies through the development of real world solutions to a range of problems, not just the learning of ICTs, no matter how novel and interesting. Now the main challenge for you as a teacher is often not to impose your own interests in particular ICTs on students. The latest robot, drone or programming language or game engine can be exciting. And it is great to model this excitement but we want students to be excited by solving problems that they come up with and the ICTs they choose to use, not the ICT and problems you want to solve. And yes, we can use excuses of classroom management, poor resourcing, lack of technical support, or online access. But the power of project-based learning is in providing students with a range of resources that they can draw upon to solve problems and for them to provide solutions to these resourcing and access problems. They simply represent additional problem sets. Of course, you will show them the new ICTs that become available, and some learning activities will be necessary so that they can understand the potential of these tools. But do not focus their learning on the tools. Let them come to the tools as it becomes useful in the development of their solutions to their problems and accept that their problem may not need to use your favourite new tool. Now, constructionism and the maker movement have shown the power of student-centred learning, developing high projects based on their interests when provided with a range of resources. And this can actually reduce the resourcing load, as class sets are no longer required, and the variety of resources that students can share and form project groups around can be supplemented from other classes, schools, the department, federally, or from parents, industry, grants and competitions, not to mention BYOD of resources from home. You may not have the time or interest in pursuing such resourcing, so give this over to students to be creative in managing their projects. This in itself is a wonderful opportunity to develop strategic thinking and entrepreneurship and while you and your students have a right to be well resourced with the tools needed for their learning, this can take some time and should not stop your students taking their moonshots.